You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What is up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to another episode of All Talk with Tom Netty from the Hello Sport Podcast. Back for another week with a dual code superstar. A man who, when we were growing up, which makes us sound old, makes him sound even older. But he was the king. He was the man. He was like, you know, he was a throbber that everyone got around. He de- he came in on the rugby league scene very early, won comps with the Brisbane Broncos, played Origins, played for Australia, then jumped ship to the bright lights of Rugby Union and Big Bicky. Played for the Wallabies. Played for the Wallabies. Made a World Cup final. Played in two World Cups. Played for the Tars. Scored tries. Scored tries, did it all, then came back to rugby league, won more comps, decorated rugby league career, decorated rugby union career, and a decorated individual. Yeah, and an absolute all-round throbber. Yeah. There's no other way to describe that. Who is it, Eddie? Lottie Dakiri. Settle in. Mate, thank you again for, for coming on. How's uh, where, are you, where are we talking to you from? Where are you living? I am in Brisbane, mate. I'm in Brisbane, boys. Sunny yeah. Queensland. Yeah, mm. yeah. You must be. Uh, you must be loving the way that the team's going at the moment. Which one? Well, I mean, it's a good question. It's a good question. We do. We are on the eve of the Rugby World Cup as well, which I'm sure we're all uh, feverishly excited for. <laughs> I think we're more talking about your Brisbane Broncos, mate. They are going great guns. I'm. Um, how how uh, are we talking today? Are we talking tomorrow? When is it- well? That's actually a good point. This will come out after tonight's game. So you are uh, we as it currently stands. We don't know how they've gone against the storm. Yeah, no, no. Brisbane Broncos are flying, boys. Um, Reese Walsh, how good is he? Yeah. Um, they've just got a young team, blokes who aren't. You know, at the you know, people don't think they're at the top of their game or whatever. Are doing their job. Billy Walters, I think he's probably been one of the best nines in the comp this year. I know he's very underrated. I love him. I used to see him in the sheds as a young kid. He used to still our balls when I was in the <laughs> shed um, in the early two thousand. So it's pretty cool to see that, that him running around. But Keenan Palacia, all those sort of blokes. Have come in and done a job, um, and they got and they're doing really well. A big chance to uh, to uh, win the comp this year. Massive chance. Are you around the club at all? Do you have anything to do with the boys? Do they get an old lady to carry in there to maybe pass on some words of wisdom about what it takes to win a comp? Yeah, well, I in and around. I, I get in at different times. Um, I've got no idea who I am. It's just some <laughs> dark bloke walking around. <laughs> He's a Wendell Stale, he's a Petro. <laughs> the other. Um, but it's nice to see the boys uh, at different times. Luckily enough to, to have a bit to do with a few of them. Coming up through their under-20s Queensland um, gig, I, I did a, a bit of stuff with them uh, back in the day when we beat New South Wales. Paddy Carrigan, um, who else was playing that team? Tommy Flagler, Tristan was out the back. So... Um, there's a few blokes in that team uh, have a little bit of an affinity with, so um, it's good to see him doing really well for themselves and representing um, that Broncos jersey with pride. What are you you talking about, Billy Walters? Before there, like a kid where he was sort of unwanted is probably too harsh of a, a description for what he was. But you know, he was at the Tigers. He wasn't necessarily a highly touted hooker, but being given like consistent time in the role and you know an opportunity. Where now, as you said, he's been one of the the form nines in the in the competition. Do you think that there is a these days like maybe uh, a bit more of mentality of like if you aren't good straight away or succeeding straight away, it's just sort of like a chop and change thing. Do you think there needs to be more give players more time in the saddle? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think um, you know there's a lot of churn and burn when you're young. There's a lot of guys that get in the systems. Um, and if they're not good enough well, by the time they're 17 to 19, they're sort of out the back door, which is a little bit sad, um, but they can actually still play footy. Mm. And then you've got young guys um, who probably mature a bit more a bit later. It's probably what, what Billy had done. Um, and to be fair, if I'm being honest, if his dad wasn't the coach, he probably wouldn't be have been given um, the time to – mature the way he has. Mm. Uh, we all know Billy can play, but I know from uh, 
from an ex-player point of view. The coach backs you. You just go out there and do your job. Mm. Um, and it looks like Billy's doing that. Um, they've got faith in, in what he can do um, and what he does on the field and what he does for them. And, uh, he's, he's been a revelation at mine, just mm. under the radar doing his job. Yeah. He was a, he, the start of his coaching career was a little – there's a lot of questions, really, of Kevy Walters. Can he get the job done? Is he up to it? Is he up to the rigors of first grade? I know people like uh, Gordy Tallis had always come into bat for him uh, consistently. Yeah. Are you surprised with how well the Broncos are going under Kevy? Like, did you see this coaching ability in him? I, I, I saw him being successful, but I didn't, I didn't see this being as successful as what he has done in the last, what, nine months since – the comp started or, or whatever it is. I, mm. I, I thought they'd go well. I thought they may have been a chance to make top four. I, was, I had them in the eight. Mm. Um, and a, a few mates uh, do a competition where we pick our know, top eight at the start of the year. Um, and I silly, I had the Tigers in there. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Jesus buddy. Christ. I go on there. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I had I had Bronx making the eight. I didn't didn't have him in the in the, in the top four. But Kevy's uh, what he does well. He, he's got the history of the club down pat, um, and I think Alf runs off that. It's still an element of yes, we're professional, but uh, there is a cheekiness to him. Um, and and Benny Eichen was in there who brought that uh, serious side, I guess. So. They've had a few. Benny obviously not there anymore. Um, he's moved on to URL, but um, I think he's done a real good job in boys embracing each other and playing for each other, which Wayne used to do, um, and to have a joke uh, and get them really tight um, together and playing as a, as a unit and as a squad. Is there any similarities to to the was it what two thousand and one when you guys won it or two thousand? Is there any similarities to that side? You know, do you, do you uh, need similarities in sides even like, or is it just sort of a whatever's happening? You know, they're probably more uh, – probably got a, a bit more, I guess, blokes who can play a bit of footy. You know, yes, I was in a great team. Darren Locke was fullback. Uh, Dell on the other side. Um, great back division. But they've got a, a similar um, type of player all the way through. Like their talent going through um, is sensational. They just had to work hard. I think they've worked hard for each other this year. Um, and I think that's what Adam Reynolds has probably uh, brought along. Mm-hmm. Um, having a bit of an older bloke coming into the squad and sort of getting them real tight. Uh, and I think I, I don't want to pat myself on the back. It's probably something I brought. I didn't bring much from the footy point of view on the field, but I brought a little bit of that when I went to South in my final year. Um, just having an older bloke in the team just to, calm things down and uh, and just say, look, we'll just play footy. Mm. Just, just to win games, let's just go back to this. What's the vibe like up there in Brisbane? Haven't won a comp since 2006. Are people like foaming at the mouth or trying to go, try not to get ahead of yourselves? You guys know you've been up here. Uh, we love our footy up here. Everyone is foaming. <laughs> I think the Dolphin supporters have jumped back on to the Broncos now, they're out. Mm. Uh, everyone, there's big expectation up here, and um, when the when the Broncos are being successful, uh, they've got thirty odd, nearly forty thousand to every game, um, and I think it's going to be a sellout um, against the Storm, which they will win <laughs> and win comfortably, I reckon. Mm. I'm so, with you. Like, yeah, what's yeah. your what's your thing? Mate, well, like, I mean, again, no idea what we're talking about, Lottie, so it's I appreciate you asking my opinion. But, uh, <laughs> mate, I think the Broncos, like, everyone's talking about the history of the Storm, uh, you yeah. know, off oh, 14 games, but I'm like, this is a different team. This team's like, this is a hectic rugby league side, and they just they seem like they're getting better. So, I mean, I hope they win it, because I really enjoy watching them play, but I actually think they will. Sorry, yeah, Lottie, I'm, I'm with history, mate. I think Storm win tonight. Unfortunately, I know, Liz, I, I've got I've to keep consistent here. I can't change my opinion just because I'm talking to you. Um, I, and I think the Storm, I think they're just edge you. I don't think so. I, I actually think uh, we win, or Brisbane win, um, we, we kick away probably in the last 10, I reckon. Okay. Like the, um, they've got a few of those last back. Paddy's got to play. Paddy's massive. Mm. Um, to, to what this pack does. 
Uh, and I just think from uh, if I'm playing, if I'm in that team, if I was Kev, I'll just go out there and tell them to play the way you've played, boys. Go out and be the Broncos. Don't go out there and go into a shell. Go out there and play the way you played South. But go out there and play the way you played Parramatta. Mm. And just go out there and score points. Because it'll come. Mm. Come. Obviously, defence um, wins the finals, what everyone says. But um, if I'm Kev, I'm telling them, go out, go be brash, Reese Walsh, go do your thing. Um, paint us, do what you do every week. Nothing changes. Mm. Go out and do that. You've been the second best team of the comp, nearly the best. You've finished ahead of Melbourne. Go out there and play the way you've been playing and, and play it like you have been. Will you be going to the game? I'm going to the game tonight. Uh I don't know what time I'll leave. It's going to be pretty early. I think everyone in Brisbane uh, will be going to this game. Yeah. So it's it's uh they they reckon it's going to piss down at about seven o'clock. Oh really? Yeah. So um, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. That might bring Melbourne back into the game. That'll make it interesting. Jesus. Won't it? I didn't know. Wet weather football. I didn't know that. Was I going. swear we were talking the other day, and our oh, uh, our weatherman on our we have a we do a punting show as well, and our weatherman on the show. I'm pretty sure he said sunny, clear. He said dry rugby league football. It wouldn't shock if he's got it wrong. That's for sure. Yeah, well, you know, you, you never know. You never yeah. know. There's no, there's no clouds in the sky at the moment, but yeah. We'll, we'll, see we'll see how we go. go. Mate, we started this thing off by saying how you're feeling about your team and you said which team, which kind of shocked me, but then it's like you did win a comp with South, so that's fair. Is t- do, do the Tigers rate a mention in your team conversations or is that sort of like just a period of year? Like are they are they a team of yours? They do. I um I probably have regrets about, what you know, a big regret about the Tigers, probably 2010-11. Um, I reckon within those two years, we probably should have won a cop. We had a great team, um, got beaten both years in a prelim. Mm. Um, I don't want to go back because I hate going back and, and reliving memories. <laughs> Tigers, if I'm being honest, I probably had the best time on the field of playing footy. Like we played a, a style that was great, big looping plays outside of – uh, Chris Lawrence, Benji Marshall was six, um, Robbie at nine. Uh, we just played a really great style of footy. Um, and just to be on the back of that, mm. uh, it was pretty cool. Scored a lot of tries. But, yeah, one regret was definitely 2010-11. Like, was, was one of those Braith's field goal? Yes, that was – well, that was not in a prelim, but that was in a final. Oh, okay, that, that was a final. Um, against the Chooks. Yeah. Uh, Simon Dwyer ironed out uh, Jared would hit Maria Hargraves, That's which is right. probably send off now when he probably get. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I still say it's the best shot I've seen live because um, both of them were going at it. Mm. Probably very much. Uh, and that night it was, um, it, was, it, was, it was a hectic night. Yeah, that was, was good. St- was there another one you – because I'm just – and, again, I know you said you didn't want to relive it. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to try and make it. But well, was there another one where, like, Christian Inu scored late against you? Was there – is that the one I'm thinking of? <laughs> that's the other prelim, yeah. If it goes now, if it goes – I don't know what the bunker was doing. There was no bunker. No. Nah. Um, it got touched midair and it went forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, so I'm supposed to be catching. I have to go up for it. And I'm going on the trajectory of the ball. Kick gets kicked across. And then it's supposed to come here. Something happens in the air and then it goes askew some way. So I sort of miss it. Something happens. Christian in scores, we lose. We get knocked out. It's the Warriors in 2011. That was, pro- that was a dark time for me, mate. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, look, sincere apologies. I do think 2011 might have been the time Manly won the premiership last. Yeah. So, so I don't think you were going to win I then. wouldn't have wanted you to have gone to the grand final and lost like that. So, again, it was probably a blessing in disguise for you. Hey, Manly, what, what was the score there in, the, in that clip? In the grand final, I think it was like 20, 24 to 12 or 14 or something, I think. And the Warriors now. So, you boys was... 
You call them the Waz or your Warriors? Well, listen, I mean, I don't mind. I'm, I'm getting on the Waz bandwagon for the finals because Manly's not playing. I don't mind the sort of get up, like up the Waz uh, movement. I like the up the wires movement. I wasn't even aware they were called the wires until the start of the year. Well, no, it's a new thing. Oh, is it? Yeah, is no, it it's a new thing. Because when we talked to people from New Zealand, they were like, no, nah, it's been the wires for a while. Well, it, I mean, it's certainly come into like the cultural conversation recently. I would have thought anyway. Have you heard Have you heard the wires before this? I heard the wires probably about started three months ago or something. Yeah. yeah. Right. But the wires, they're the warriors to me. <laughs> Mate, you don't want a bar of it, eh? A bar of the warriors, no. <laughs> <laughs> how was um how was your transition back to rugby league when you went back to the Tigers? How did you find that difficult to to fit back in? Mate, I um it was just throwing straight back in the deep end. It, mm. it was really good. Uh, had I had a a week or two to adjust and started thinking about it, um, I would have probably struggled a little bit more. And, and but mate, I get I fly back in uh, Sydney on a Wednesday. Meet the boys on a Thursday. Um, maybe have a session on the – have a rest on Friday, Saturday, do some recovery, Sunday captain's run. I think we play the Monday against Manly. Oh, there you go. There you go, the old Monday night footy. And did you did you score in that game as well? Did first touch. First touch, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Short side play down the short side. <laughs> it's probably forward pass, though. Yeah, well. <laughs> back to the highlights uh, we, we actually um, rehearsed out of training so got over the line um, and that was a, a, a I guess a um, if that hadn't happened I was nervous as fuck <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah just the, I, and I think that was about five to ten minutes in I hadn't even touched the ball for me when I was playing I'd like to I like to touch the ball early to get myself in the game uh, and then I'd go from there, but I hadn't touched the ball yet. Uh, nerves were sort of running, just right. bubbling away. Away, you had Brett Stewart out the back. I didn't want to, you know, he, he was top of his game. Um, big T Rex, I think I was marked up. Oh, this. Jesus, <laughs> oh, god. Uh, um, so I didn't know what to expect, but uh, got that first touch, got over the line, calmed the nerves. And I think we end up winning the game late. Poor old Brett Stewart, I think, tackled me. Late in the game, I think he did his knee in that first game. Oh, really? Season. Well, Manly, we we are uh, our our we've got we've got a great history of great fullbacks, but they also unfortunately can be a little. Well, they've been a little injury prone. We've had some bad luck, or they've had bad luck. We are always brought to you by our good friends at Ned Zeddy. People know that by now. They're the best in the biz. They're the betting agency, the betting platform that we use here at Hello Sport, and about even, which is the number one betting show in the country. Um, and they support us dutifully, and we support them. And I, having a punt on the weekend, not that it's important, had a bit of a stinker. We had a big stinker, you and I, really. Yeah, it was a stinker. We had a stinker. We were all right on about even, Tom and I, but, geez, we stunk it up. Oh, no, we weren't good in about even. Yeah. We stunk it up in about even. Civilian. We had some civilians that went all right. Okay. Tom Starling, big fan of your work, yeah. bro. Shout out to Tom Starling. Tom Starling. Tom Starling. 11.50. Whatever. Tom Starling, whatever. 11.50. Whatever, Tom Starling. 11.50, whatever. Yeah. Now, private. if you're in the private Ned's group, yep. which is about called About Even, yep. Secret Pass Go Dribbler. That's better. Then you may have seen the Tom Starling bet. I can't remember if I shared it or not. I hope I did. But that's where you get – that's where you got to go to try and find some good juicy insights. Because – that's where Tom and I hand out our award-winning bets because, you know, they're about even ones are okay, but it's our civilian bets that really hit home. I would reckon we probably land 80 90% of civilians. Well, listen, that's probably a lie, but the about even group is where you're going to find them, and that's only on the Neds app. So be there. Be there or be square. Shout out to Neds. Love Neds. Neds number one. Go Neds. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support... Call the number on screen or visit the website. What's it like coming back to like when you left, you were, you know, a B 
big dog, for lack of a better term. But, like, you're still young, obviously, when you left rugby league. But, like, you were a big name in the game at Origin, Test, all that sort of stuff. Then coming back, you're still a big name, but, like, the game's carried on without you. And there's all these big names that have sort of come up. Like, you mentioned a Brett Stewart who wasn't around when you first played. Do you come back intimidated by players you've never heard of? Well, not never heard of, but never played against? Or are you sort of a bit like, I'm still the, the big man on campus? Uh, no, I didn't have too much of an ego. I was like, I'm like Wendell Saylor. So we're probably in yet, right? I don't know if you've had him on your show. Yeah, but, we haven't had him, but we know Wendell. Uh, anyway, yeah. So I, uh, I was like, yep. Yeah, because um, I, I watched the game, obviously. Was watching it religiously. Loved seeing blokes like, uh, I think Israel Falau had come on as well. He was dominating um, at that time at the Bronx, whatever it was. But, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I just came back, respected the bikes for what they were doing, but I, I knew I, I still had a fair bit to give um, at that time. Uh, I probably left rugby or left the country probably not in the best way. So I, I thought, come back, um, and I, I knew I still had a, a fair bit to give. Um, wasn't the best way for me um, to sort of leave rugby the way I did and not on my terms. Mm. I thought, I'm going to go back and... and, and really give this a crack. I know I can still play. Um, I remember late in the game. I think it was the second tackle. I mm. tried to chip the chase. <laughs> and then, yeah, anyway, you know, rugby obviously don't get any tackles, but I was, I was, I was trying that stuff. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, got used to it as, as the year progressed. And you made it back to test rugby, didn't you? To rugby league. Like you played, didn't you, did you play a test yeah. or two when you came back? Um, Jared Hayne got injured uh, just before the, uh, they, they picked the squad. Jared Hayne got injured. I, 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 I got a start in a few tests, um, and we lost the Tri Nations final to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, was, I was pretty happy with coming back and playing some rep footy. Mm. Uh, I um I think I was pretty close to maybe at the start of the year I was on fire I reckon I don't want to pat myself on the back but I I had a really good start to the year I I didn't expect to play for Queensland at all but then I was I was you know murmurs around that I, I was in the mix um it would have been great it would have been nice to yeah. do the uh, maroon jersey again um but that didn't happen but I did get uh, a kangaroo jersey at the end of the year which was very very cool to play with. Those superstars um, that you were talking about, mate. That mm. I'd watched, um, you know, Kirk Gidley. I played with Billy, mm. Cam Smith, and those like Johnny Jonathan Thurston. Mm. Um, great, great time. When did you like? How did the transition from Tigers to Rabbitohs go? Did you was it just like one season to the other, or did you stop playing and then come back? What happened? I actually went up to the UK, or not UK, went to Ireland for a three-month stint um, in, in Ireland. So mm. I did. And then I, uh, Madge was on the phone. Madge, before I left, Madge was saying, mate, why don't you just come over, see how you go. Um, and I knew, I knew for a fact that Madge's, uh, Madge's pre-seasons were pretty ordinary. <laughs> speaking to guys in the game and, and, and over there at Souths and everybody else. So I just put him on a back burner for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> put him on a back burner and then told him back later in the year, um, yes, mate, I'm, I'm available. I'll, I'll come back. After, uh, yeah, after they've done preseason. <laughs> they will. They've done halfway on you. <laughs> you let get a few of the boys on. A rugby league preseason is – Absolute torture. Like I like, I actually, I, I hated it. <laughs> Season and training was, was just a way to get to a game. Mm. For me, you know, other guys love their training, love running around. I can, uh, I can safely say, rush all that if I can keep fit, get me game fit, get, get, give me two games, three games, I'll be good for you. <laughs> but yeah, all that stuff, I, I was the worst. 2.K time trial, 2.5K time trial. Me and Matty Utah at the Tigers at the back, just <laughs> getting lapped. <laughs> uh, Sheenzy at one point, uh, at the st when we were getting lapped, he, he told our trainer boys, it's not a good look. Um, 
maybe these guys just do sprint stuff. Me and Matty Utah, my brother, they're doing their 2.5K time trials. Shinzi look after me and Matty Utah. We would we just did 100 meter sprints, <laughs> but we covered the same amount of uh, distance. Distance, um, just like a five, 10 second rest in between. Um, me, we're both power athletes. A lot of power athletes in the game now. Um, with, uh, you know, a big Polynesian, Melanesian effect in the game. Mm. I'd actually love to see how some of these blokes go in, in a preseason. <laughs> well, but the the way- Haas, right? He's a freak. Yeah. 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 I don't know where he's come from. Like, maybe he's Superman. It seems like, absurd. He, yeah, he, he can do anything. He can play 80 minutes in a how fast this game goes now. So, um, yeah, I, I really like watching Payne us. When you went over to the Rabbitohs, did you th- like? Did you ever in your wildest dreams think that you'd win the comp that year? Did you think that that was going to be a possibility with the team you had? It was a pretty sick team. It was a good team. Amazing team. Well, I, I'm, I'm not stupid. Like, <laughs> they told me the turn, who came last to stay at the Tigers. We were going okay, but they, like uh, the Tigers a few years before that, They'd missed two prelims two years before that as well, before I got there. Mm. Something was like Sammy Burgess on the way up, Greg Inglis, mm. freak. Great team. Get there. I'm not guaranteed a spot, but there might be a chance. Um, and I remember going in and there was a few video sessions, but uh, Madge would really harp on about the prelim the year before. And it was against Manly. They got dusted. Yep. Really make a, a beeline for Justin Horror. Justin Horror apparently came on in a in the prelim and, and changed the game. He'd love to hear that. We, we're friends with Horror. He'd love to hear this. He would be salivating. Yeah, well, he really rammed that point. I don't know if Justin knows this. Um, <laughs> really rammed that point home about like how he came on. Our our blokes didn't do that. Um, and if we get the chance to go there again. Um, we need to obviously change things up. And that sort of stuck with me during the year. And we actually got the chance to do that. In the, our prelim in 214, we go down 12-0 in the first 15 minutes against the Chooks at um, Stadium Australia. Mm-hmm. And that's probably where I come in. I hadn't had any of the you know, past baggage around what was going on. Um, and obviously Ben Tia comes on and plays a major role, picks up one of those, dumps in, gets a penalty, we're on here. But for me, I, we were behind 12 blokes are sort of looking around and thinking, and I could sort of see, I don't know whether they know it or not, but I, I can sort of see, like, you know, the feelings or, or the looks on the faces about, fuck, here we go again. Mm. So for me, and... Sato did it too as a captain, but I just got them back together. We did a fair few things that year around um, our head headspace and, and, and how we could improve that and, and what we needed to do. We got back in there, did a few exercises around breathing and just brought it back to boys, just, just go out back and do our jobs. Mm. Like I know we, I didn't want to bring up uh, the year before. Mm-hmm. I had anything about – what was going on, but I'd say, boys, we're back in this. We can get back in this. Look at the, look at the clock. Um, things to that effect. We're probably swearing a fair bit. Yeah. <laughs> Guys up off the ground looking up. Uh, everyone buying in collectively. Uh, and we end up smashing them in that major semi. I think in 2014, that was probably our, our GF um, in that prelim. And then we go on the next week and to beat uh, the dogs. Mm. It wasn't easy, but uh, it was a, it was a definitely a tough game to get through that prelim and yeah. to beat Chooks at the same time. Sensation. And what's that? What was it like? I mean, it's it's obviously it was. I imagine it was fantastic. But you know, um, over the whole course of your career and not knowing, you know, was that your final game as well? But like being able to sort of have it all wrap up with the grand final and like a historic one, it being for South. Yeah, it was so good. Like I, I really, appra- really, really appreciated it more um, than what I did the two thousand Broncos one. Mm. Two thousand Broncos. I'm young. I'm, you know, I'm thinking 
Well, there's at least two or three more. Mm-hmm. You, I looked at that squad at the Bronx, Tony Carroll, Brad Thorne. Gordy was still at the top of his game. You know, how, how far can we take this? So I didn't appreciate it as much as I've come through that journey um, to get to 2014. Mm. Um, ups and downs and, uh, you know, the injuries at the end of my time at the Tigers. Um, probably played a little bit. And then I um, got the chance to do that and, and share that with my kids too. So mm. I was pretty cool going around the, the stadium uh, with those two, the two older boys. Um, and that sharing that moment with them, which is um, something hopefully I won't forget, but I'll never forget. Mm, yeah. Um, going back to your start, what like, and obviously you played and you, you came in, in in a stacked side. Um, but what was, I didn't realize that you were born, I know, obviously I know you're Fijian, but didn't realize you're actually born in Fiji and only moved over here when you were 15 years old. What was the, was that a culture shock for you coming over, or was it pretty cruisy? What was the sort of circumstances around you coming out to Australia? Yeah, I think that, um, yeah, that get, often gets um, confused, that one. Mate, I came over when I was four. Oh, you're four? Fuck, mate. Another that's, example. Uh, that's uh, that's a good old Wikipedia, Wikipedia. I was going to say, you got a fucking thick Australian accent. Yeah. <laughs> so but I, I didn't play any uh, I didn't play any competitive footy until I was 15. Okay. I got it mixed up. Um, yeah, no, no, it was different, mate. I, I, circumstances for coming over to Australia was my dad came over to play rugby. Oh, okay. Uh, and for a local footy club here in Brisbane. Mm. Um, yeah, and I'm a byproduct of, I guess, uh, you know, workers from other countries coming here and, and, and you know, doing their bit for Australia. You could get a, you could get a, a visa quite easy back then. Mm. <laughs> Which you probably can't now. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Well that makes that makes more sense then, right? So you came in here where you when you were when you were quite young. Um we might jump onto Wikipedia and change that one for you, mate, just so there isn't any future confusion. Yeah. yeah Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um so then were you I mean your old your old boy played, were you always good? Were you always good? Like you, how long when until you start getting uh, recognized? Man, I don't know. I don't my my older brother was pretty good. So I always probably just followed him, mate. Yeah. And he was he was really good, and I just wanted to be him, actually, um, or be as good as him. He probably fell by the wayside, uh, got sort of mixed up in the wrong. So he probably tread the path for me to mm. um, sort of go the right way rather than sort of the way he did. So, mm. um, yeah, then I got picked up at about 16 uh, at a local footy club, which was the same as uh, Camp Smith's. Logan Brothers. Okay. Yep. Uh, and a few of those other uh, guys who, who come from down there. And then um, fast forward a few years, mate, I, I, I get a start in a stacked team um, off the bench um, in two, 99. Yeah. How, how old were you then? I was 19. I just turned Jesus. 19. So from the time of getting picked up to actually debuting, like it's all sort of, it's all quite quick. Yeah, it all went pretty quick. Oh. I think I was lucky. I think at the time, Wendell, he was flirting with he, with rugby. Uh, and I think he went overseas and became a South African student. Um, <laughs> and then he came back. Uh, <clears throat> he played Leeds. I think he wanted to make a little bit more money. Mm. <clears throat> so I, I don't know if I was catapulted into that um, top squad. But I... Um, to get into that that, that squad uh, at that time, to play with the likes of Steve Renoff, I think he's still playing. Alf was still there, um, obviously on the end of, of their careers, but to get to be able to play with those blokes um, was amazing. Uh, some of the best times um, in my footy career. Mm. It's incredible. So you basically started playing footy when you're 15 and then four years later you're playing for the Broncos in that stack side. In that stack side, yeah. That's in insane. That- it's my my debut was against uh, the Sharks at the old ANZ Stadium here when the Suncorp was getting rebuilt. Mm. Coming out, I'm looking at uh, ET. Mm. Far out. Man, I, I, I grew up idolising this bloke. Mm. Like, I don't even want to tackle him. Blokes like that. Matty Rogers was playing as well, but the thing was, I had to pinch myself. I, I, I came in um, thinking. Wow, uh, and truly blessed about um, 
where and how this game has taken me, both rugby league and rugby union. Did you play any rugby union growing up or was it only ever league? Oh, mate, I played – I only played league. Yeah. I watched a lot of rugby union. I, I must admit, I uh, on a Saturday afternoon when the Blitters Lake Cup was on, I, I, I did watch – uh, the Wallabies take on New Zealand um, and love the Harker and everything else, but then went to watch my cousins play. Um, but, you know, I don't know about you, Bucks, but when you grow up in Queensland, grow up in Brisbane, it's all rugby league. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you, you, there's not a lot of union, mate, unless you go to a, uh, a GPS school or an AIC school, mm. then, you're, then you're playing rugby union. Yeah. And uh, was your household was your household staunchly rugby league or like I mean I know rugby union or seven specifically is massive in Fiji was there that element that you guys had or not it was just all I don't think Fijians discriminate mate <laughs> um, <laughs> it's huge sevens was huge I must admit I I love um, no one in uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah when he was playing at the Raiders uh, and, and that Raiders team was amazing so that sort of I think he brought a lot of rugby league. Uh, to the forefront of, of what – in Fiji anyway. Mm. Uh, and I think that started uh, scouts and everything else um, going over there and looking at young Fijian blokes. Mm. And I was on the back of that, which was pretty cool. How long into your first grade career do you start feeling like – or do you start sort of excelling but also feel comfortable? Because, again, now I'm just terrified to fucking reference anything I've seen in your Wikipedia. Um, but, like, you know, I know that you were you were uh, Dalian Winger of the Year very early on. I think maybe even top try scorer, at least for the Broncos. But, like, how quickly do you – is it like there's a difference between having success immediately but then feeling comfortable in and around the sort of professional setup? I mean, I reckon – so I, I played 99. I reckon probably played about 12 or 13 games off the bench, maybe started a couple. Uh, 2000, yes, we win the comp, but I don't think I started 2000 um, as a starting winger. I was, I was on my way up. Michael Hancock started the season, and then I, um, I finished the season – so I don't think I got comfortable or considered myself a first grader probably until midway through 2000 season. And then my, I guess, belief in myself and handling that higher level was probably playing for Fiji in the 2000 Rugby League World Cup. Mm. Uh, I played for Fiji, captain them, and played against Australia in Newcastle. Um, I, don't, I can't remember where it was an old stadium out the back there, but mm. we got pumped. But I played really well, and I was pretty happy about why and how how I went in that game. Mm. Coming off the back of winning a, a premiership in two thousand, um, I remember I scored a try off the scrum. I I jinked and I bumped Trent Barrett off. Uh. As I ended up playing with him the next year for the Kangaroos, but mm -hmm. um going over, scoring a try, uh, making breaks, and, and thought after that, oh, I, I sort of belong at this level. Mm. Uh, and then my confidence sort of shot through the roof after that. 2001, probably, I think we get done in the prelim again at one, 2001 and two uh, with the Bronx, but really cemented myself and, and my um, confidence um, in that 2000 season yeah. what is what is confidence in that in that regard give you like you know you said when you came back uh to the tigers you're throwing out like chip and chases and shit like when you're younger what is that confidence just to like back yourself to like take on a defender or to like is it to literally sort of just try things like how does it sort of manifest yeah well i think it def depends on the coaches as well i think uh you know wayne was really structured uh, Wayne, um, he's like, that, you stay here, just hit it up, this, that, and the other. We'll get the ball to you and you can do your thing. Mm. Whereas Tim Sheens was a little bit different. He, um, he, 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 he trusted you to go out there and if you do it at training and you can do it, um, on the field. Mm. Uh, and we had players that could do that sort of stuff, um, and would make you a little bit more confident in your own ability to to to, to 
put a kick through, to do a, a pass out the back. Um, so, yeah, I, when I was at Brisbane, I, I think Wayne liked getting through the set, um, getting down the other end and, and playing and then playing new footy. Uh, he plays a, a game around percentages and, and possession and everything else, mm. uh, whereas Sheens is probably pretty similar, but um, will let you play a fair bit with the ball. Uh, and I'm, I sort of coach young boys now. Um, I let them do what they, you know, I don't try and hem them in too much around what they're limit, limit them too much. Yes, don't make mistakes, but um, go out there and express, express yourself. Mm. We've been talking to a couple of uh, current footy players that have uh, been coached, coached by Wayne Bennett recently. Uh, yeah. They give you a little bit of insight into how loose the man can actually be. There's a couple of stories they've been retelling us about him coming into the bloody video sessions with the pan, with his pants around his legs just to sort of diffuse any tension in the air. Hey, was he was he loose when you were there in, in the early 2000s, mate, or has he got looser over time? Looser as he's gotten a bit older. You know, he's starting to lose his body. <laughs> when well, they paired up to him at times on the telecast, right? He's nearly asleep. <laughs> um, I don't think it's just a means to an end for him just watching footy. Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't do too much of that stuff. I, he looks a lot more jovial now. I think some of the stuff he does is pretty cool. That one of the main things um, I've never seen. And I don't think a lot of people have seen him drink. But after we won the 2000 grand final, um, we're on our training ground. We make a makeshift fire, campfire. We're putting sort of stuff in. Probably not allowed. weren't allowed to do it. We were the Broncos, obviously, in, in Brisbane. So people turned a blind eye. He came down and uh, we're having a few beers, a few Forex goals, what have you. Everyone starts cheering him up, you know, neck of beer, neck of beer, neck of drink. Uh, and after a bit, he sort of sits down and lets, lets it go for a little bit. Um, blokes are up there at different times, necking something for something stupid he did. Out of the blue, he gets up. He got someone He got someone to bring over some lemonade, so he's a shandy. <laughs> Whatever it was, it may have been three quarters lemonade, a quarter for its goal. He's necked it. The boys are going up. <laughs> Sensational. <laughs> Haven't seen him touch a drop since, even before that. But the boys, boys were on. Everyone, everyone. I think Gordy went over and started picking him up, <laughs> and throwing him in the fire. So that was. Pretty- Have you get? Did you get? Was it? Were there some like odd experiences of when you're like the Brisbane Broncos in Queensland that you can just do within reason, like get away with fucking murder? <laughs> Oh, I, I, no, I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Give us something, day, Lottie. Back in the day, which is never allowed now, I, I think I see the older blokes. Um, so sometimes I see Murray Daly different times. Blokes in the, in the 90s when they used to come to Brisbane. Um, when I first came in, we had an unlimited drinks card to a place called City Rose, which was in the city, which is now on the, it was on the water. Um, so you could go in there after a game, order as many drinks as you wanted. Jesus. I remember going in with mates, boys, let's go. Five deep. Um, yeah. And then- Would they see you coming and just be like, oh, shit, Lottie's rolling in with his boys? <laughs> no, well, they'd they just see all of us rolling. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, the whole side's coming in. Straight upstairs, uh, which we, you know, I, I don't know if if that happens these days. But they were a sponsor. It was a club approved sponsor. Um, so it was like, holy hell, <laughs> not fly these days, right? No. Did you have a physical card that said unlimited drinks? <laughs> It was a physical, and I reckon it was it was the laminated. Remember the old laminated? Well, I don't know if you blokes are old enough. The laminated 
uh, IDs with y- your photo on it? Nah, we're we're that's before our time. At like our licenses were a little bit more uh, official, I think. Yeah, well, this is what was going on, <laughs> and then you know sometimes you just give it to your mate, go get get a few drinks, and just look over. Yep, yep, that's me. Uh, yeah, madness, absolutely. <laughs> that's living. That's like that's like you know. If it, yeah, ask like, what could you dream of? It's like an, an unlimited made a physical card. car with my photo on it yeah. that I can use for for Pierce whenever <laughs> I want. Is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but um, Wayne's an old, he's an old copper, mm. so he he had uh, he had the streets wired, mate. Ah, uh, so there. So if any you played up, you're in his office the next day, or. Like it, it, it worked in your favor, or it, it may have not. So you go straight to him, and then the press would know. So back in the day, they probably used to shut down a few things. I, I obviously didn't do anything crazy, mm-hmm. but all that menial stuff that journos pick up now, um, probably like a bloke peeing in the bush or <laughs> Payne Huss, and who, who who got in trouble the other week about. Stepping on his shoes last year. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Payne and Albert Kelly. Albert Kelly. Um, that just would have been, you know, come up here, let's have a chat about what happened last night. Wouldn't have been in the press, whereas now all of that stuff with you having a bit of a tiff with the missus, mm. um, she's trying to tell you to go home, um, all that sort of stuff. You I can't know, fart in public these days as a footballer without someone knowing about it. Well, you can, but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, sadly, yeah. um, that, that's where, where it is now. Yeah. I mean, they get paid a, a fair bit of money. I don't like how people say that. Like, well, they get paid a lot of money to, um, you know, you know, they, they can't do anything anyway. You know, it comes with the territory. Fair enough, but they are human as well. Yes. Like, like they're young. Mm. 19 year old is with his mates having a good time, right? And and these guys are, are expected to live by society standards of 40, 50-year-old men. Mm. Well, just to be faultless as well, like there seems to be very little, uh, you know, uh, grace given to someone fucking up. It's like yeah. if, if you had a camera on you 24-7, and I certainly know that you and I would be in big trouble, huge trouble. So. Huge trouble. Early in your early 20s, you know, late teens, right? Mm. Definitely, or in your or in your early thirties, or in your early thirties, even your forties, Lottie, fifties. You know, <laughs> you just get better at hiding it, mate. I think, <laughs> mate. I wanted to ask. So you're you're at the peak of your powers. You've won a comp. You're playing for Australia. You're playing for Queensland, and then rugby comes a knocking. Was that a difficult decision to make the switch when you you already were you experiencing so much success in rugby league? Yeah, mate. I I. I I didn't actually want to leave the Bronx. Uh, 2001, 2002, we, we, we're making prelims, play State of Origin, play for, for the Kangaroos. Um, really hard decision. I, I, I would have said before, and I think I said at the time, um, if I do come back, I'll, I'll come back to the Bronx um, because club I was, I'd been a part of since I was 16. Um, those formative years from 16 to, to 19 or 20, um, uh, you know, blokes are really influential in your career. Um, coaches, senior players, um, I, I just didn't want to leave. Um, so that was really hard decision. Mm. Uh, so the they rugby did make it easy uh, with a lot of money. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it was something I, I, at the time I just couldn't knock back after I'd, you know, I, I ticked a lot of boxes. Uh, had I not won a comp, had I not played State of Origin, um, I probably wouldn't have gone over at the time. Uh, the 2003 Rugby World Cup being in Australia helped as well. Mm. It would be a big spectacle. Um, I reckon, I don't know, I, I, there might be a few blokes that jump ship before this next World Cup in 27. Um, just because of that fact, uh, so that was that. Were, they were big factors, but yeah, mate. I'm not gonna lie, money money was was probably up there with the motivating factor, and wanting to test myself at that time. 
I don't know about you, Blacks, but my dad, my father played rugby. I sort of wanted to, at some point in my career, do that um, and, and test myself in that game, and it was it was a perfect time. Had Maddie and uh, Maddie Rogers and Big yeah. Wendell gone over by this stage? They'd gone over in two thousand and two. Okay, twelve months in, skin in the game for about twelve months, and they were a good, um, I, I guess, a case for me to to watch their progression um, for that that twelve months, and they. Um, like they played rep footy pretty much straight away. Mm. Uh, so I thought, I, I can kick better than Dell. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, as an aggressive runner or break the line like him, but um, I, I, I've got a few more skills, um, and I reckon I could give this game a go. Um, yeah. And, and I, I sort of knew or, or know um, how that how the game sort of works, um, and, and and I, I reckon I could kick. Big Dell had a club foot, mate. Even though he, he go to practice, he still couldn't kick. <laughs> so um, I was uh, lucky in that sense. Does uh, Does Eddie Jones reach out? Who reaches out to you, like in that early stage? Like, is it you know some sort of suit? No, the suit was he was head of <clears throat> high performance. I think it was Jeff Miller. I think he ended up being the Queensland Rugby Union CEO. I think he may have been a coach of Reds for a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I, I played in a mock sort of sevens tournament with my family or cousins up here while I was still signed with the Bronx. He must have been there. And we win the sevens tournament uh, and he'd come up to me after the game and said, mate, if you're serious about coming across, uh, mate, here's my card. Let's talk. I didn't think too much of it, and then he, and then somehow got a hold of me after that, uh, and then um, we started talking to each other, and then well, I don't know when it was, but um, it, it was hard. It was it was actually hard to. I think I called Wayne. I think I don't know. I think we had, may have been on a. He gave me the day off or something to go and sort it out, and um, I think I called him up. I think they were training the boys. And uh, and I I didn't know how to, how I was going to break it to him, and I actually don't even remember. Probably put it in a, in a <laughs> he blocked it out. I blocked it out. Um, but I do remember saying, "Mate, yeah, I, I'm I'm gone. I, I, I've got to go. I, I, I've done it." Mm. And that's all I say really. Um, and I think he I was a bit taken aback because I, I genuinely think he thought. I wasn't going to accept going over mm. uh, because there was a lot of touring and throwing. But, yeah, it was probably one of the hardest phone calls I had to make um, at that time in my life. I didn't want to disappoint him. He's a bit of a, you know, a bloke uh, you put on a pedestal, you bloke your respect, um, his opinion on, on pretty much everything. So that was a tough phone call to make. What was it like going over to rugby then, the experience? Did they look at – did the, the rugby players sort of – Look at you and the and and Dell and Maddie as a bit of like look at these guys coming in here thinking they're going to be able to do. It. Was there a bit of that going on, or was it pretty smooth? Externally, I think there was. Um, I think internally, the players were pretty cool. Footy players are footy players. I think Wendell probably had a bit more uh, of a hard time. I think. I think he's got a few stories about blokes just telling him to piss off. You know, don't stand close to me. Um, Whereas for me, I I I, uh, I went straight to Sydney and put on a blue jersey on. That mm. was tough. Ah, you look good in it, mate. You yeah. did. You looked fucking blue. Good. Blue looks very nice on you, mate. Really, really nice. Um. Yeah. So that was tough. Uh, footy players are footy players. Once you're part of a setup, as you guys probably know, um, we're all pretty similar. Uh, tick um, similar ways. It's just that blokes. Probably got the started degrees, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you would in a rugby. That's changing. That's changing now, isn't it? Mm. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that was the main difference, mate. Um, just the external stuff around the press. I didn't read it too much around people giving other kids a go. And I think Joseph Sewell is probably putting up with a little bit now around how much money he's getting compared to some of the other people or 
even, you know, fair enough. The girls are saying, you know, they're giving money to, to, to Joseph where they could be spending it on, on them or grassroots or whatever. But, you know, I, I feel a little bit sorry for Joseph because what, what can he what can he control? Like, he's only signed the contract where they're paying him for his services, right? Mm. That's all right. And, and he, I think with him as well, though, Joseph specifically, like – He's a marketing play. He's going to put bums on seats. He's going to get eyeballs. He's going to get he's going to get interest from rugby league circles. So I think I think if you look at it as like a marketing play, like when Falau went to AFL, I mean he's not an AFL player. He just went there to try and get eyeballs from Western Sydney. So if you look at it that way, I think it makes complete sense. But there's always a lot of noise around these things. A lot of noise. There's a bit of both. I think Joseph can play. Yeah. Um, well, it's both. Yeah. Unlike unlike Falau and AFL who couldn't play, Joseph can. You're right. Be interested to see how, you know, Joseph's got another year too. He's got another year on his Roosters contract, mm. um, and sort of where he goes or where, where they take it from there. Uh, yeah, mate. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to know as well. Did the Waratahs offer you a like a all you can drink card? Do you get anything like that at the Waratahs? Or, or was it just free RM Williams for life? <laughs> I don't think they were that country back then. Oh, okay. I think Sort of being part of the latte set back then. I've they've gone, <laughs> haven't they? Yeah. Um, no, nah, no, nah, no nah drinks cut, mate. No nah drinks cut. Sydney, Sydney's rugby league, mm. right? So, um, no, nah, I, uh, what were we offered? Not that much, no, nah. it much. was good travel, good travel. Oh, yeah, it was, um, it was at least in my own memory, kind of like. Glory days, rugby was rugby was still killing it. You know what I mean. And obviously, you come in and we make the World Cup final in Australia, um, and the Waratahs were good. I remember crowds being big. Your yeah. first season, how do you remember it? Because you know you you're testing yourself, but you you seem to succeed straight away. Yeah, yeah, and, and then get straight into that uh, World Cup squad at the end of the year, which was pretty cool. Mm. Um, I I was lucky to come over that time. They had a, a bit of money in the bank. On the back of that, all that success, they go won the '99 World Cup. I think they beat the Lions who who came in. Yeah, they uh, did. Yeah, so you know, on the back of guys like Matt Burke, George Greig, and Stephen Larkham, um, you know, David Giffen, Todd Kifu, that crew, Tim Horan, they um, they paved the way for guys like me to come over. Uh, and get paid handsomely to, to do a, to do a job, uh, which I, I, I enjoyed. A lot of people say, oh, I just went out for the money, this, that, and the other. Money was good, yes, but um, I actually enjoyed playing rugby when rugby was played uh, expansively. Mm. Yeah, it was good fun. Like, it was good to watch. Rugby, rugby played at its best is as entertaining as any sport on the fucking planet, eh? But, like, 100%. seems like it's just lost its way. Just not consistent uh, um, with that. Uh, yeah, I, I reckon it has lost its way, mate. Um, the the officiating's gone nuts. Uh, you can't really watch a game now where it gets officiated one week, you know, differently compared to the next. Rugby league would be a little bit like that in a sense, but not as you know chalk and cheese as, as some things in rugby. Um, they're just pulling up things that you don't need to pull up. Mm. Like, this goes against spirit of the sort of game stuff. Yeah. Like, ball down, you get a yellow card. You're trying to – you're not knocking the ball down. You, you, you're trying to intercept the pass, things like that. Mm. Um, guys going into contact. I know head injuries and, and everything are, are big now, and fair enough. But um, – you know, blokes go and play, know, know the risks, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you, you go and into the game, uh, you can't protect everyone. Like, no. seriously. Yeah, it's, so, it's, 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 it's like fucking, you know, racing cars and then, you know, suing them because you have a, a car crash every once in a while. Like, you know, it's going to, you, you're running the risk getting out there and doing it. Obviously, you want to take it seriously, but it does seem like rugby, rugby league does, you know, everyone's taking it seriously, but rugby union seemed to be, I, like, I'm pretty sure, uh, was it 
like I don't know if he, how long ago it was, but I just you know you saw like Samu Karevi get fucking red carded carrying the ball. Yes, because he put his he, elbows up. He put his up. He put his bumpers up. Yeah. Um, they tried to get Tino for that this year, right? Mm. Did they get him? Oh, I think they got him once, but they didn't. They he, he took some souls before they before they decided to get him. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing with this. Um, Rugby World Cup in France, which is just come around real quick. It's starting tonight, actually. Starting tonight, the All Blacks versus France, right? That's right. I just think um, that World Cup will be won on the back of discipline. Yes, you've got to be disciplined um, but to get like sent off or yellow carded for menial things, I think, uh, and to lose a game when you're playing against. 14 or, or, or 13 men, um, it, it's, it just goes against, I, I think, uh, the spirit of the game. It's too much impact on the outcome of the result as well for these, for these like, seemingly innocuous acts most of the time anyway. Mm. What was it like in being in Australia in the wake of, like, you're in the sort of the wake of the 2000 Olympics, everyone's sort of fucking, you know, loving the country. Then we've got the World Cup at home. We're in the final and, you know, like, what's, what's that experience like? Ah, oh, so cool, mate. It was, I, I probably liken it to, um, if you're in if you're in Queensland anyway, um, that that build up for a state of origin is is, is immense. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but uh, we were sort of sheltered a little bit in in 2003. We went up to Coffs Harbour. Uh, yes, there was a, a lot of hype around it and about, um, but we didn't really get to experience uh, being in those. So I think we came down to Sydney. Maybe on the Wednesday or the Thursday, we played on the Saturday. Mm. Sort of sheltered up there. Uh, it was great when we did go to the different cities around Australia. But um, I will definitely in 2027 go and, and be a part of, uh, you know, what it what it really is and enjoy having a, a beer with a bombs and a French over here. I remember clearly, probably not 2003, but in 2007. Uh, in France, just go. I didn't want to be in there, but you go into the game. I mean, Aussies are carrying on, mm. going past. It was just a great atmosphere, um, and, and I'd probably like to um, experience that for myself. Uh, I still may get up to France um, in the next couple of weeks. Oh, really? Yes. Um, so we'll see. Maybe the Australia Wales Australia Fiji game. Yeah, um, it's actually while we. I think this. Yeah, we got sent these by rugby as well. I don't know if we got sent by rugby Australia, but if you want to talk about a, a sport that hasn't lost its way, look uh, at this, mate. This is the merch you want. This is. <laughs> they're selling these. What do you think of these? These mate? are for sale. Wallabies, berets. We're happy to send one to your house before you go. You, uh, how much they cost? We got them for free, mate. Yeah, we're influencers. Yeah, perks of the, uh, <laughs> perks of the podcast business. <laughs> Find those. What, what do you reckon? Did you think those look pretty good or what? I think they look all right. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, look, you're the first person to give us compliments on them. That's for sure. They're also selling thousand dollar, thousand dollar footballs on their website. So yeah, they are. You can go um, in and get. We get may them. or we may or may not have one of them coming, but that's <laughs> that's beside the point. What? Um, how do you reckon Eddie is? You, you were obviously coached by him, the great Eddie Jones. How do you think he's going to handle his, his second stint? Obviously, he's three games into it, but we get to the business end now with the World Cup. He's zero and five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm glass half full with, with Eddie. I'm glass half full with, with the team itself. Obviously, yep. being an player, um, I don't know how many more chances we can sort of give him because um, he's, he's, he's throwing it right out there. He's obviously making it about himself, which is good. He's taking the heat off the players. But at some point, mate, I've got to start winning games, right? Mm. Yep. Well, I mean, he said the other day, basically the journalists, and, and rightly so, you, you raise the point now that we're not winning games, and they sort of bring that up, and he told them how to give, them, give themselves uppercuts. <laughs> yep, you're the most negative bunch of blokes I've ever met, mate. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I don't know. He's got to start winning games. Yes, they'll probably beat 
Georgia, their first game this weekend. The fact you say probably is fucking terrifying as well, though, isn't it, right? Like, you know what I mean? I know. I never thought I'd say that. I yeah, mean, that will was... be, but it won't be as clinical as it should be. Mm. I thought they were a chance against France in the in the in the last game, but they got walloped. How much of it do you reckon with something like this, um, where the situation in rugby has got to a point where we literally just don't have the players that are good enough? And I'm not saying this as an opinion; it's a question. But is it that we don't have the players that are good enough? And in and if that is the case, then the coach can only do so much. Or is there still enough playing ability in the side where you're like you should be able to coach them to a win? Yeah, I think there's still enough playing ability in the side. Uh, I, I definitely think think that. Well, at least compete. Like you can't, you know, you, you want blokes in there with heart. You, you, you just you just want blokes in there competing. Uh, they don't really have to have a lot of skill. Like those Queensland teams, mm. like Fatty's Queensland teams, when was that, 97 or, or whatever it was. Mm. They were like on paper. Mm. Yeah. We end up winning the series, and they could probably do that for five games. Um, the Wallabies, like they play three, maybe four, yeah, four, four pool games, and then they they get into the quarters if they can get there. They just got to do it for four or five games, um, and and they're a chance because you can coach in and around that. You hold the ball. The Wallabies have just been making too many mistakes. They give the ball back in in, in places. Where they just relieve the pressure. Uh, they, they can't build pressure. They're giving the ball away at, at critical times in games. It's really frustrating to watch. They cut some of that stuff down. Um, they're a chance. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, I'd, I, would, I wouldn't I would have thought I'd say this either a couple of years ago, that this could, it could be make or break against Fiji, Australia, Fiji. And I said it a couple of months ago, I wouldn't be shocked if there was an upset. It no. feels there's something in the air. And I know I've got my Wallabies beret on and I'm trying not to be negative because I love the nation. Uh, but there, there's some, there seems to be something on the wind. Yeah, well, Fiji uh, are definitely um, coming around. Like that, that, that Drew team, they played amazing footy uh, in the Super Rugby competition. The fact that they've stayed together uh, and played a, a, fair, a hell of a lot more rugby together. Like you look at uh, the Wallabies, they, you know, for team cohesion, they probably only played what four or five games together. Because mm. I, I think the, the, the Fijians um, have played a hell of a lot more. They're probably going to be hamstrung there. Number 10 has, has got injured in the last couple of days. Um, he was a big uh, part of the way they played and a, a really good goal kicker. So they might struggle in that sense. But you're right, mate. Um, to say Fiji are a chance to beat them, uh, Fiji probably go into the game as favourites. Like they knocked off England last week. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then the Welsh, you you you, you never know. They, they're being coached by uh, Warren Gatlin, who can get them up for one game. Um, so mate, if they don't make it out of the pool, does Eddie Jones keep his job? I reckon he probably only just does, but. Questions have to be asked. Did you think it was a good call bringing him back in the first place with Dave Rennie and where the team was at at the time? Well, I felt a bit sorry for Dave, to be fair. Now, I think he got blindsided. Uh, I, I, I love Eddie. I, he coached me when I first came over. I like his style. He left me alone. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he, he told me my job. I, I did my job. You do your job in Eddie's teams, he, he leaves you alone. Um, I, yeah, felt really sorry for Dave Rennie. I don't know whether 12 months out from from the World Cup you can do that, but they've done it. They haven't won a game yet. We're going to see how they go over the next couple of weeks. Fingers crossed they get through uh, the pool stages. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very optimistic take there on the state of Australian rugby. <laughs> uh, all the best, mate. Really appreciate you coming on. No, boys, who's going to win the comp NRL? Ooh, I think the Panthers will, mate. I think the Panthers, but I want the Broncos. Well, I also want the Warriors, but that's not really going to happen. I want Bronx. Mate, is Sean Johnson out? Yeah, Yeah, for this week he's out. And they said he's he's no guarantee of next week. So 
they're pretty much gone. Yeah, yeah they're, they're cooked, mate. They're cooked. Yeah, okay. I reckon Brisbane get them. Yeah. Uh, I want the Panthers to win three. That's, that's, that's part of the reason as well. Yeah, I know. It's too much. It's like, too many. Two's too many. Two's too many. There's a part of me that's like, you know, I also don't, I mean, obviously if it's not manly, I'm like, I also don't mind being like observing greatness when it happens and seeing some team do something crazy. But then I'm also like, fuck them. They've had enough success. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> the box to come up and spoil that party. Yeah. That's it. Beautiful. Well, mate, mate, good to chat. Thanks again. Have a good weekend. We'll, uh, we'll see you at some point, I'm sure. Take it easy. Thanks, bro. Cheers. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>